What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Big Fight Field channel, where we speak the truth, we're honest, and we give out takes on the Miami Dolphins. It is Thursday night, September 15th, 2022. This is your preview for Sunday's game between the Dolphins and the Ravens. It is week two, ladies and gentlemen. This is a crucial game, in my opinion. A crucial game for the Miami Dolphins, as I believe right now, they're on the toughest stretch of their season. They open up the season at home with the Patriots, which we expected them to get the W, which is exactly what they did. They're one and zero. That's in the past. Um, very happy with that win, but a lot of stuff to clean up uh, from Sunday's game. Now we have Baltimore, Buffalo, and Cincinnati to to finish up the first month of the season. Um, and I believe um, these three games are going to say a lot about who the 2022 Miami Dolphins are. Can the Dolphins compete with teams like Baltimore, Buffalo, Cincinnati? Are they there yet? Their roster is very talented, the Dolphins. They had one of the more successful off-seasons in the NFL. It's now time to go prove that on the field, and these are the type of games that you go and prove it. You go and prove it against teams like Baltimore, against teams like Buffalo, and we'll get to. The, I don't want to. I don't want to um, go overboard here and talk about the next couple games. So I'm focused on the Ravens, and this is not. I'm going to say right now, uh, before I even talk about the game, this is not going to be what happened last year. I'm telling you right now. Yes, when we beat the Ravens, we were two and seven. The Ravens were the top seed in the AFC, but the Ravens had a lot of key players that were injured and did not play in that game. So it is going to be a completely different game. We're on the road. We're not playing in Miami. Um, we have a bad history in Baltimore, and I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say that that's not a good thing. Cause that's not a good thing. So, um, but before we get into the game on Sunday, uh, if you have not already, be sure to go ahead and check out the recap of the Patriots and Dolphins game that happened on last Sunday. The post game, the post game review. Be sure to go ahead and check that out, and go go ahead and check out Tuesday's show that we did. Short little fifteen minute video uh, on the latest Miami Dolphins news and stuff like that um so we are actually going to dive into the other games really quickly that are happening week two uh we got tonight thursday night football um we got the um chargers and the chiefs gonna be a great game i expect a lot of offense i expect a lot of offense in this game uh, Justin Herbert and Patrick Mahomes. Keenan Allen is not playing for the Chargers. I don't really think that's going to matter. The Chargers went into Kansas City and beat them in their home turf last year. I think they're going to do the same exact thing this year. Give me the Chargers in sort of an upset tonight against the Chiefs. And I think this is going to prove, this is going to be the Chargers saying, hey, we're the big dogs in the AFC West now. We run the show here. That's exactly what I think is going to happen. I like the Chargers over the Chiefs tonight. Um, then we get into Sunday's games. Jets against the Browns. Uh, Joe Flacco's quarterbacking for the Jets. It's basically an L. I know Jacoby Brissett's quarterbacking for the Browns, but they got Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. They run the ball all day. They're beating the Jets. Um, I'm going to take the Browns in this one. Indianapolis against Jacksonville. I'm very disappointed of how Indianapolis performed against the Texans. As I had really good hopes for Indianapolis this year. And I know it's week one and it's super early. Um, 
But to see them lay the egg that they did against uh, Houston, to tie Houston, it's not something I'd be proud of if I'm the Colts. Um, so they're playing Jacksonville. And the last time I remember the Colts playing in Jacksonville, Jacksonville kicked their ass and eliminated them from the playoffs. And I'm pretty sure it was like 26 to 10 or something like that. So I don't know, man. This might be my upset of the week. I'm going to take Jacksonville. I'm going to take the Jags to defeat the Colts again on home turf. So I'm going to take Jacksonville to beat the Colts this week. Um, Tampa Bay against the Saints. The New Orleans Saints have Tom Brady's number. It's just something about Tom Brady against the Saints. He just doesn't beat them in the regular season, man. So... Um, I like the Saints. I think it's going to continue. I don't think they're going to sweep them this year, but I'm going to take the Saints this week um, in the Superdome. Give me the Saints to beat Tom Brady in the Bucks. Carolina against the Giants. I think the Giants' victory against Tennessee was a fluke. Um, maybe they'll prove me wrong. I don't know. Um, but even with a, it was a loss to the Browns, which you know Baker Mayfield has was pissed off. About losing to the Browns. Um, and I think he's going to take it out on the Giants this week. I like Carolina to beat the Giants on the road and get their first win of the season. Um, the Patriots against Pittsburgh. The Patriots are two point favorites, which is very, very weird because if you watch that game against the Dolphins on Sunday and you watch that mediocre offense you're like how in the world on god's green earth are the patriots favorite against the steelers who have a top five defense now let's be honest missing tj watt for six to eight weeks is a huge blow for sure um but the steelers still have a damn good defense a top five defense in my opinion in the nfl I don't know why this is a nationally televised 1 o'clock game. Uh, luckily for me, I got the Dolphins and the Ravens on my local channel, so I will be watching that game on CBS. But even if it wasn't, I, I mean, you can watch it on Paramount Plus as well. But the fact that NFL thinks people would rather watch the Patriots and the Steelers over Miami and Baltimore, which is one of the bigger games this week, it just goes to show you how the how the NFL is so out of touch um, with what they think's good games and what's not. Um, I, I, the Patriots' offense really bad. I'm not high on Mitch Trubisky. I'm gonna take the Steelers to win the game. This is going to be a really low scoring game. Uh, this is going to be a very low scoring game, like 14 to 10 or. Um, 16 to 16 to 13. This is going to be a really low-scoring game, so I'm going to take the Steelers here regardless. Um, Washington against Detroit. Detroit lost against the Eagles on Sunday. They put up a damn good fight, man. I like the Lions against Washington here. I think the Lions get their first win of the season um, against Washington. Um, moving on to the 4 o'clock games really quickly, Seahawks 49ers. Seahawks spoiling Russell Wilson's return to Denver uh, with the Seahawks beating the Broncos on Monday night. Uh, this is not going to happen. I like the 49ers at home. Rams, Falcons. The Falcons fucking suck, okay? The, the king of choking. A 16-point lead in the fourth quarter. And they lost the game. Uh, they're the worst team in the NFL, in my opinion. I think the Rams, this is a huge get-right game for the Rams. The Rams are going to absolutely demolish the Falcons, in my opinion. Texans-Broncos. I think the Texans are going to keep this game very close. But I think the Broncos are going to get the win. I can see this being a touchdown game or a four-point game uh, that comes down to the end on fourth down and it's turnover on downs or something like that. But I think the Texans are going to keep uh, the, uh, the. I think the Texans are going to uh, keep this game pretty close. So I like the Broncos though. Cardinals, Raiders, both teams coming off a loss. 
Uh, I like the Raiders at home in this one. Bengals, Cowboys. Um, no Dak Prescott for six to eight weeks. The Cowboys are pretty much screwed now that with, there's no Dak Prescott. Uh, their offense is a big issue. And I think Cincinnati's a seven point favorite. I think Cincinnati's probably going to win by at least two touchdowns in this one. So I, uh, I like the Bengals. And um, Sunday night, Bears Packers. Give me the Packers. Monday night, we got two games uh, Vikings Bills. Bills, uh, they're probably going to blow them out too. And the Vikings Eagles. Give me the Vikings on the road against the Eagles to end off the week. And those are your week two NFL predictions. But we got one more game to talk about. We got the Miami Dolphins against the Baltimore Ravens. Really quick, the injury report came out uh, today for practice on Thursday. Uh, Seaton Carter and Austin Jackson did not practice today. It looks like Austin Jackson is not going to play on Sunday. We will talk about that. I'm going to get to the offensive side of the ball. Uh, Salvin Ahmed Limited, Teron Armstead Limited. He did not practice yesterday uh, because of a toe injury and um, veteran rest. Uh, it's good that Teron Armstead practiced today, but the fact that he's already on the injury list and it's week two and he's never he's played in the NFL for 12 years and he's never played a full season. The fact that he's already on the on the uh, injury report, is makes makes me concerned, makes me really concerned going into, you know, not the later months of the season. So that's not a good sign. But I'm glad he practiced today. Tanner Connor, Xavier Howard, Brandon Jones, Eric Rowe, uh, Christian Wilkins, Cedric Wilson, all limited. Uh, they're probably fine and they're going to play on Sunday. Greg Little was a full go, and um, he's the backup for Austin Jackson, so they need to get him as many reps as possible. Melvin Ingram practiced today as well. So that's the Dolphins injury report. Let's go to the Ravens injury report. Um, see if they have any big names today. Um, there we go. Tight end Nick Boyle did not practice. Uh, J.K. Dobbins did not play last week, but he's been practicing all week, so it looks like he's going to be making his return for the Baltimore Ravens uh, this weekend. Marlon Humphrey limited with a groin injury. Uh, Travis Jones full. Marcus Peters full go. Uh, James Porche uh, did not practice. Patrick Carr did not practice. And Ronnie Stanley did not practice. So, that's what we got for um, the injury report uh, for both teams. So, um, let's talk about this damn game, man. I'm very excited for Sunday. Um, I I'm very, very excited for Sunday's game. I th games like this. Or have me thinking, okay, the Dolphins made all these great moves in the offseason. We got Armstead, Tyreek Hill, um, Connor Williams, Raheem Moster, Chase Edmonds. Um, this team can be next level, in my opinion. I think they have the talent to jump to the next level in the AFC. The question's going to be, can they win games like this? This is a huge game in Baltimore early in the season and uh, you know for damn sure that uh, the Baltimore Ravens ever since they got embarrassed by us last year on Thursday Night Football 22 to 10 uh, they've had this game circled on their calendars like they beat us last year embarrassed us on national television we want revenge that game on our home turf um, and John Harbaugh is one of the pettiest coaches 
in the NFL. So he is going to do anything possible to win this game and get the revenge that happened last year, which was us embarrassing the Baltimore Ravens uh, on Thursday night football. Uh, the Dolphins were a two-win team at that time as well. So um, The Ravens are going to have revenge on their minds, and to me, that's, just, that's scary. And they also didn't have some top players uh, that are going to be playing this week. J.K. Dobbins is back. He's more than likely going to play on Sunday. Marcus Peters didn't play last year. I think Marlon Humphrey was injured for that game. They were missing a couple linebackers as well. They were a good team. That was our best win of the year last year, uh, easily. But, um, man, they had so many injuries going into that game. And now they're fully healthy. Like I said on Tuesday, though, they are miss they, they did put two new players on the IL, and they're both out for the season. Jawan James has a torn Achilles, and Kyle Fuller, I was about to say Duggar on the Patriots. Uh, Kyle Fuller tore his ACL, and he's out for the season, uh, which is one of the Ravens' starting quarterbacks, cornerbacks. But um, still doesn't matter that they have their big players back uh, with J.K. Dobbins, Marcus Peters, Marlon, Marlon Humphrey, um, and they're one of the top teams uh, still in the AFC. Um, things that I'm worried about, I'm not, I'll talk about, I'll talk the offensive side. I'll talk about the offensive side first for the Dolphins against this Ravens defense. Um, like I said in the uh, post-game recap, uh, the Dolphins offense put up 13 points against the Patriots, which is not good uh, for any team. But on that day, how bad the Patriots offense was, 13 points for the offense was enough to beat the, uh, the Patriots on Sunday. Uh, the defense scored a touchdown, so they helped in a huge way. Um, but if you want to beat the Baltimore Ravens, if, my, if Miami wants to go in to M&T Bank Stadium on Sunday and beat the Baltimore Ravens, they have to score more than 13 points because 13 points is not going to cut it against a team like this, in my opinion. If you mess up, they're going to take advantage of it, unlike the Patriots where Tua made a couple bad throws and it should have been intercepted, like the one late in the fourth quarter. Miles Bryant had that had the ball in his hands. It should have been intercepted. I, the Ravens are going to take advantage of opportun of missed opportunities from the Dolphins. So the offense has to be better. The offense has to be better against the Ravens. 13 points is not going to be enough. Tyreek Hill, I hope he continues to do his thing because he had a great game on Sunday. I don't know who's going to be covering him. Possibly Marcus Peters locking up on Tyreek Hill. And Humphrey on Waddle. I, I'm not. I don't know. But uh, excuse me. Um, I don't know who's going to be locking up Hill. I don't know who's going to be locking up um, Jalen Waddle. Hopefully none of them. Not hopefully none of them uh, get locked up and they're able to uh, provide some yards, get some touchdowns for this offense. Um, Hopefully the Dolphins are able to run the ball as well because it's just a huge factor that we need to kill time, let the defense rest. That's Mike McDaniel's thing. Mike McDaniel's thing is running the football, running the rock. That's what he did best in San Francisco. That's what we need to see on the field. We really didn't see much of it on Sunday against the Patriots. Chase Edmonds, 12 carries for 25 yards doesn't cut it man it, it just it doesn't cut it at all and we need to see better from the running game so I am worried Baltimore's defense is very good I know they played Joe Flacco on Sunday and Joe Flacco is a washed quarterback 
But this defense uh, for Baltimore, it does scare me a lot. They're very good. They're very fast. Um, and they're aggressive as well, man. So I hope that the Dolphins' offense can play better um, on the offensive side of the ball against Baltimore's defense. Offensive line could be an issue as well. I do think Teron Armstead is going to be on the field against the Ravens, which thank the Lord uh, because we need him. We need, we cannot have two or be getting killed out there, man. So we need Teron Armstead. If you watch the All-22 film of the Patriots Dolphins game, his blocking's amazing. Is that stuff like we saw against the Patriots? How much giving to a protect protection on the left side, blocking the shit out of Judon makes me so happy that we signed him. But at the other side of things, um, him being on the injury report is just so annoying already. Considering he hasn't he's never finished a full season, uh, but we need him on Sunday really bad. Um, Austin Jackson hasn't practiced all week. I, I don't think he's going to play. Um, I don't think there's a need to rush him back, to be honest with you. You can just slide Hunt over to right tackle and put Robert Jones in right guard. I think you're, you're okay with that. And we get the offensive line of Armstead and Eichenberg on the left, Connor Williams the center, and Robert Jones and Robert Hunt on the right side of the offensive line. If Austin Jackson doesn't play, which more than likely, I don't think he's going to. So that's the that's my ideal case of what I think this offensive line is going to look like for Sunday's game. That's my that's my thoughts on it. Um, let's go to the defensive side of the ball against this Ravens offense. I'm not concerned about the Ravens offense at all. I know Lamar Jackson threw three touchdowns. Uh, I know the Ravens offense looked really good in the beginning of fr like the first half against the Jets, but they play the Jets, folks. Uh, the Jets suck. Um, Lamar was slinging that ball all across the field against the Jets. Three touchdown passes, no interceptions, um, but I'm not worried about their receivers. I'm not. Rashad Bateman's their top receiver besides him. And DuVernay and Prochet, they don't really have much on the receiving side of the ball. So I'm pretty sure that Mark Andrews is, could be getting the ball a lot. I'm not sure. I am concerned about the running game for the Ravens. Lamar, J.K. Dobbins is back. Um, we just need to be able to contain those two guys, not have them do much. That's the key thing for defense. If we can do the same thing to Lamar Jackson that we did last season, we are going to win this game on Sunday. He was he was throwing fits on the sideline last year for how much how he couldn't do shit against the Dolphins defense. Um, there was freaking one play where there was three defenders in front of him. He was trying to move, and the Dolphins defenders wouldn't let him go anywhere, and he just took the sack. Um, he, he was he was throwing fits uh, from that game last year, and if we can get, if we can get, if he can somehow get that same thing and get Lamar pissed off, man, the Dolphins are going to win this game. Just get in Lamar's head. Pressure him as much as possible. Just do the same thing you did to the Patriots' offense on Sunday. I know the Ravens have a better offense than the Patriots do, but we did this. We we, we demolished uh, the Ravens' offense last year. They couldn't do shit against us. If we do the same thing, I'm very confident that we're going to win this game. But... Um, we just have to be able to play blitz, play man, none of this zone shit where they're getting 12-yard passes for first downs and 8-yard rushing eight rushing for 8 yards of carry and stuff like that. It's just we need to be able to contain the running game, contain Lamar Jackson, and get Ogba 
Wilkins, Melvin Ingram, um, Jalen Phillips to go after Lamar Jackson all day, every day, just like they did last year. And I think if they can, man, I think we have a very good chance of winning this game. So um, I just need the defense. We just need the offense to play better than they did against the Patriots. And we need this defense to show up and show out just like they did last year against this Ravens team. Which I know this the, the Ravens team we're playing now is better than the Ravens team we beat on Thursday night last year. So I'm praying that we can get this W because I'm not confident that we're going to beat the Bills. I'm sorry. I'm just being truthful. And going to Cincinnati on a Thursday night is going to be really tough. So, if I want to win any of these three games that we have coming up, I want to win the game on Sunday the most. I think we can beat the Ravens. It's po it's definitely possible, and I think it's a good chance that we can beat the Ravens um, in Baltimore. We've had a terrible history in Baltimore, forty to nothing and thirty-eight to six. I don't want to see any of that shit. If we get blown out by the Ravens on Sunday, I'm going to be very, very pissed off. So, I, I hope that's not the case. I hope that's not the case at all. I'm hoping that we can walk into Sunday, get the W, and leave Baltimore 2-0, man. So, I'm not going to give a prediction. I just, I'm, I just don't like giving predictions of my own team. It makes me feel like I'm jinxing my own team. So I'm not going to give a prediction, but I just hope we got to do what we got to do. Take care of business, man, and walk out of Baltimore 2-0 on Sunday. So I'm out of here. Thank you all so much for joining me. Uh, if you have not already, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Uh, we will have the post-game recap on the channel Sunday after the Dolphins and the Ravens game, whenever it's over. Uh, we'll have the post-game recap video um, Sunday right after the game. So be sure to subscribe. Comment down below your thoughts on the Dolphins-Ravens game coming up on Thursday. You can leave a prediction down below who you think is going to win the game on Sunday. If you're a Dolphins fan, leave a comment. If you're a Ravens fan, leave a comment. Um, hit the like button if you like what you heard from me. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram as well. Um, at Colin underscore Joseph. And guys, I hope we win this game on Sunday because we need it. It's early in the season. But trust me, this is a crucial game that we need to win. So I'm out of here. Have a good one. Stay safe. And as always, uh, stay classy. We out. Peace.